We spoke to Chris Orty, Level Design Director, about the map changes included in Content Patch 1. If the target spawned here, no one would really want to go in and take it down. No one would really want to take the risk because they would probably be the ones that end up dead. The layout before was a lot more open. Open water, there was a lot less cover, there was a lot less vegetation density in here as well. Any player that wanted to get into that building to take the boss down had to take a huge risk of going through this water that would sort of slow you down, it would make noise, it was full of AI, and it was very easy for other players to kind of come in and, and snipe you down. We added more terrain-based paths going in there. So we have these sort of mud paths leading in. Um, there's another one here, and there's one also coming from the north. We also did a lot of work on the cover surrounding the location as well. So we've added more buildings, we've added more structures, we've added a few more approaches so it's easier for players to kind of leapfrog from the perimeter into the center of the compound. We added a lot of vegetation to the north side. The reason for this was to give spawning players a bit more of a chance. They have a bit more protection when they're approaching the compound. In the south side, we kept it reasonably open because what tends to happen is, you know, if a boss is discovered and it's, uh, you know, under banishment, most players come from the southwest and the southeast where the other compounds are. So if you're defending this structure, you can kind of keep an eye out and you can see those, uh, those players approaching a little bit more easily. A big series of changes that we've tried to do for a lot of the compounds is to make sure that when you're coming out of a building, you have protection. You have some kind of shield around you a little bit. You can look at the um, space in front of you and you can make a bit more of a decision about where you want to go next. We also made a few changes to things like the windows, the gaps and other stuff to make it a bit less uh, simple on the outside to see what's going on on the inside. Um, all these windows, as you can see in this location, will also all be closed by default unless players who are in there and attacking the target can, you know, they can choose to have those open or not if they want to kind of peek out and, and engage the enemies that are out there as well. So hopefully these changes will make a big difference to this location and then we're not going to end up with these kind of piles of dead hunters that was <laughs> plaguing it before. Um, so yeah, that's Scupper Lake. A lot of players tend to end up at this one and they tend to have a lot of PvP at this one. We wanted to kind of simplify the perimeter a little bit and provide a little bit more guided cover. On the northern part, there was these kind of these islands of vegetation that a lot of players kind of got into and they sat there and they kind of camped against the people inside. We weren't so happy with that. We saw a lot of people using them. They were quite problematic. There was a lot of places in there you could get stuck. Um, so what we did is we simplified it a little bit. We've removed the access onto those two kind of vegetation islands and we're kind of forcing players to use sort of one of two connecting routes now just to make it a little bit less random and a little bit more predictable for the defenders and a little bit more difficult for the attackers. We've added a little bit more protection in general around uh, this location. So you might notice that we have this new jetty here. This gives you a bit of lateral cover on the outside so it's a bit less open and a bit harder to get direct lines of sight on players. We also made the under part of the building a little bit cleaner and less labyrinthian. So you'll always be roughly able to see like, you know, where my exit points are. If players go in there and, you know, try to disappear, it should be a little bit more predictable where they might come out from. Um, these red panels around the edge here, these are all bulletproof panels. So if you're coming out from um, the doors, you know, players who are down low and shooting up towards you will have a slightly more difficult time of it. Um, we added a little bit more cover and a little bit more kind of places that I can peek and kind of skirt around and look at things, um, try to see where possible enemy might be. With the addition of fall damage, um, the option of just kind of leaping over the barriers and jumping down is going to be obviously a little bit more problematic. So we need to make sure that we give players a little bit more protection in that case. That's basically the kind of changes that we've been doing to this location and um, it'll be really interesting to see how people play it and their feedback from it, um, but we think it will make a positive difference. We made a few small changes to this one. The biggest change that you're going to notice is that the perimeter wall is a little bit higher than it used to be. Um, we wanted to try to reduce the amount of peaking that was happening. Um, players, you know, sitting on the outside waiting for players to come out of the exit points and then having really cool protection behind this stone wall. And they can just sit there and, you know, flood bullets into the center of the compound and just kill people. The wall is now past eye height, so if you're running along the perimeter, you know, you're not going to be able to see over it. Um, we have breakpoints around it where players can kind of peek around and see in, but that also means that players, you know, coming out of the chapel can also kind of focus on those locations and they're a bit more predictable and it's a little bit less random. Big problem uh, in terms of camping was that if you were down there and you were, um, you know, killing the boss and doing the banishing, um, you had, you know, these two exit points that you could take. One of them was, you know, coming up through the church and once you're in the church you have kind of these four or five options that you can get out of the window or go through the doors or wherever. 
the western exit unfortunately was a death trap. Um, you had to come up these stairs and at the top of the stairs you had these two blind turns and they were very easy to kind of camp, they were very easy to kind of point, you know, uh, ADS for, and wait for people to come out. You could e very easily just throw barbed wire there or set it on fire and, and whatnot. What we've given players is a little bit more breathing space. So when they come out, they're not immediately greeted by these two exits coming out of the side. What they have is they have a, you know, a, a high wall of cover here, um, and then they can see where those two exits will be and any potential players kind of coming in from those exits. Um, so yeah, a couple of small changes on this location, but they should hopefully make a difference. This was again a particularly difficult place to take a target down, especially from the spider's perspective. We have this large barn on the western side. This was, you know, opening onto these large fields, which meant that players could kind of sit at a great distance and shoot straight into this huge open window. Um, and players would be in there trying to take the spider down and, you know, you could pretty much take any weapon from there and just kind of pot shot on these guys. So we blocked that off for now. Um, we also blocked off a few of the peaking points kind of around this building. So on the lower floor, there were lots of gaps that you could kind of look into. From the butcher side, the butcher building, we actually added a couple of doors to the lower area. Um, this was a nightmare for players to navigate. You would try to get into this building and to get out again, you kind of had to go up to get out. So just to again, reduce that irritation of you know wasting time and looking for an exit, exits on the ground floor. Straightforward, but should make things a little bit more pleasant for players. The primary thing that we've done, again, more cover, more protection. Um, players that are inside give them a little bit more safety and security. Here on the left side and on the right side of this one, both of those entry points to this building, they have a little kind of porch outside them, a little bit of a, you know, a fenced off area. You know, if you're a player and you're coming out of these gates, you want to give just a little bit more protection, even just from a line of sight perspective, we have these cloth pieces and you know, these little kind of pieces of cover and whatnot. And that extends also to the western side. Again, we added a new building here, um, just to give you again, just a little bit more protection, a little bit more cover. What we also did is we got rid of a few ladders here and there as well, because ladders are pretty much, uh, you know, a deadly thing in Hunt. When you're on a ladder, you're kind of tied to it, you're forced to be on it, and you can't really, you know, do much to react if people are taking shots at you. This is one example of that, where we have this kind of long, um, you know, ramp leading out from the water up into the compound. So it just makes things a little bit more easy. You have your wits about you, you can have your, you know, sights up, you can be scanning potential shot, uh, spaces where you can be shot from. We also try to make it a little bit more straightforward in this location that once you've come in, if you're just getting a clue here um, and not attacking the boss, we also want to make it a bit easier to kind of get in and then get out and head towards the center of the map and, you know, towards your other options. We also added uh, a number of kind of these log piles and other big pieces of geometry that are just designed to break up the line of sight a bit, just make it a bit more difficult for players to get sniped from, you know, way across the map. In a few of the locations, we actually did some work on simplifying the interiors a little bit. It won't take away from the aesthetic of the game or from the atmosphere of the game, but it will just make people's lives a little bit easier that they're not tripping over the stuff and it's not, you know, bumping their aim when they're trying to ADS and attack a target, for example. In a stressful situation, you really don't want to have that, so we're trying to minimize that where we can. Just some small changes, we just thin things out a little bit. We removed a few buildings. Um, some of the perimeter buildings have been kind of taken out. We made sure that every building now in this location is accessible. There were a few that were not. We made some of the roofs accessible in some of these buildings. I think it's nice in this one to get a bit of height, to kind of get an idea about your bearings. We also made a couple of small changes inside this. We removed one of the crank gates that was there just because it was a little bit unnecessary and it kind of held players up and made players not want to use the lower parts very much. We moved one of the elevators just to make it into a kind of a more of a useful position, a bit more protected. You know, there used to be uh, an elevator on the the, uh, the south side here that was just so exposed and so open that no players would ever really want to use it. So we moved that to a slightly different position. We want to maybe do in the future a few more things here just to make it a bit more navigable for players and make it a bit easier to kind of see how you get from A to B in this one. But yeah, it should be cleaner. It should be a little bit more simple to navigate. There will now be spawning of AI near and around clues. Um, so we have randomized AI spawning at clue locations as well. So when a clue is generated by the mission manager, um, it will produce a few AI that will be around it. The clues will be a little bit more of a challenge now. You have to be a little bit more careful about approaching them. With dark sites, we found that a lot of players were only ever seeing a single clue at, you know, at any one time. So you'd go out there, you'd turn on your dark vision, 
you would see one clue in one compound somewhere. So that obviously means that you're going to go to that clue and you're going to go to the one that's closest and you don't really have any other options. We've made a bit of a change to that as well from a player planning perspective is they now open dark sight, they can now see one near clue and at least another clue. So you can have a choice to say, ah, well, we heard gunshots at that location or we think it's a bit unsafe or we don't really want to go near that one. Um, we'll choose the alternative and we can go and find a different clue at a different location. One additional small change that we've done as well is to make the cranked elevators a little bit more uh, friendly for solo players. Previously, you needed two players to operate them. We've made a little bit of a change now where those elevators will always be in the up position. Players, all they need to do is crank the gate, it will come down, they jump in, let go, and they will slowly get taken to the top. As promised in the developer update, we will also include a performance tool just to give players a little bit of extra information about their performance and it will help us a lot. We can get more information from players and we can use these screenshots and just see a little bit more about what's going on and make it a bit more easy for us to try to debug and find some of these performance issues that players are having. So guys, a big thank you for watching. Um, we hope you like the changes and if you have any further feedback for us, then please don't hesitate to contact us on Steam or Discord and hope to see you soon. Achieved with CryEngine.